During this fourth module, we are going into more details about uh, the properties uh, of uh, electromagnetic interactions. In this fourth video, we describe uh, Compton scattering, which we already encountered uh, in uh, module 3 when uh, we discussed uh, the interaction of photons in matter. After following this video, you will be able to characterize the Compton scattering, which is uh, the elastic scattering between uh, a photon and an electron, describe uh, how the polarization of the photon influences the process, and understand uh, why the annihilation of electron-positron pairs uh, as, uh, into photons has uh, similar properties. We have not yet discussed that vector bosons, which carry forces, can also appear as real particles, and matter particles as virtual ones. Compton scattering, elastic scattering between a photon and an electron, involves uh, a virtual intermediate electron, as shown in this uh, Feynman diagram. The kinematics of the process is characterized by the energy omega of the incident photon and the scattering angle theta, the angle between uh, key and key prime, which are the four momenta of the incident photon and the outgoing photon, respectively. The conservation of energy momentum reduces the energy omega prime of the outgoing photon compared to that of the incident one uh, omega, if the reaction occurs on uh, an electron at rest. The reduction depends on, this on uh, the scattering angle theta and the photon energy itself. The figure gives an example of this relationship for a source of uh, americium-241 which emits photon with uh, omega equal to 59.54 uh, kilo electron volts. Because uh, of uh, Heisenberg's principle, we can in fact uh, not know whether the photon in the final state uh, is emitted uh, after or before the absorption of the incident photon. So there are two configurations of the Feynman diagram, which are uh, indistinguishable. The processes can interfere with one another. To calculate the cross-section, we must then add the amplitudes and square the result, as we have explained in video 4.2. For the differential cross-section, one finds the so-called uh, Klein-Nishina formula. Two factors are of particular interest. The first is the factor alpha squared, which determines the order of magnitude of the cross-section. It results from the fact that uh, each vertex uh, introduces a factor of v when constructing the invariant amplitude m. Consequently, the cross-section, which is proportional to the module square of m, which is uh, at this term proportional to the 4 uh, power of v, is proportional to the square of the fine structure constant alpha. The second interesting factor involves uh, the product of two four vectors of photon polarization, epsilon and uh, epsilon prime. This appears as the amplitude in the wave function of the free photon, which is the solution of the homogeneous Maxwell equation. Under the Lorentz gauge, uh, these equations of motion constrain epsilon such that uh, key square is equal to zero. The condition, this is the condition for a real photon. The gauge condition, the mu and mu equal to zero, means that uh, epsilon mu key mu is equal to zero. The four vector of polarization, epsilon, indicated in the electric field direction, is thus orthogonal to the four momentum of the free photon key. In addition, this gauge condition shows that the photon wave function has only three independent components, not four. It is therefore justified to call the photon a vector particle. When the polarization of the initial state is zero and that of, of the final state is not measured, we must uh, average the cross-section over the direction of the initial spins and sum over those of the final state. This must be done at the level of, of the cross-section, not of the amplitudes, because the spin is an observable 
making the contribution distinguishable, as we discussed in video 4.2. For the factor containing the polarization, this results in a distribution 1 plus the square of uh, cosinus theta of the scattering angle theta between the incoming and uh, outgoing uh, photons. At high photon energy, omega much larger than m, the total cross-section is roughly inversely proportional to the square s of the total initial energy. This is a property shared by all uh, scattering processes between point-like particles. Their cross-section decreases with the square of energy scale which characterizes the process. Obviously, the square of the fine structure constant uh, alpha again determines the order of magnitude of the cross-section. Compton scattering can be measured uh, at high energy using an e electron-positron collider like the historic uh, Large Electron Positron Collider Lab at CERN, which operated during the 80s and 90s. The incident photon beam is generated by the incoming electrons via Bremsstrahlung mechanism. An accelerated charge tends to emit photons. Here the acceleration is caused by the electromagnetic force coming from the particles in the other beam. The electron or uh, positron emits a photon in its original direction of motion. The photon interacts with a positron or electron in the other beam via Compton scattering. The outgoing uh, electron and photon are observed in the detector. As the initial photon connects two vertices, it is a virtual photon with k square uh, different from zero. Our treatment of the Compton effect applies to real photons with uh, k square equal to zero. To apply it to this case, uh, we select events for which the mass of the initial photon is negligible compared to the characteristic energy, that is to say, k square much sm smaller than s. The cross-section for Compton scattering with these uh, quasi-real photons measured by the experiment L3 at LAP is shown uh, on the right. The dependence on the initial energy square of, uh, of s predicted by the calculation is in fact observed. It is proportional to 1 over s. Rotating the Compton scattering Feynman diagram by 90 degrees, one obtains another process, the annihilation of an electron-positron pair into a pair of photons. Notice that we also convert the outgoing electron of the Compton, Compton process into an incoming positron. This remains without consequence because these two states are completely equivalent. We will come back to that at the beginning of module 6 when we discuss antiparticles in more details. With the appro appropriate changes in the kinematic variables, we can convert the Compton scattering result directly into the cross-section for pair annihilation in the center of mass frame and neglecting masses for s much larger than uh, the square of the electron mass. Not again the characteristic factor alpha square which comes from the coupling constants and 1 over s which characterizes the square of the energy available in the process. We have chosen the center of mass frame where the electron and positron collide with equal and opposite momenta. The photons are therefore also emitted with equal and opposite momenta. The scattering angle theta is the angle between the incoming electron and the outgoing photons. It is obvious that the angular distribution is symmetric under theta going to theta plus pi. The factor 1 minus uh, cos theta square in the denominator can come as a surprise because it makes uh, the cross-section diverge when the scattering angle approaches 0 or uh, 180 degrees. Such a divergence is not admissible. The cross-section that represents the probability must always respect the, limit, the upper limit of unitarity corresponding to a probability of 1 for the process. Already the factor 1 over s looks suspicious, but the dangerous limits s goes to 0 
cannot be reached because of the threshold as uh, larger than four times uh, the square of the mass of the electrons. The angular divergence on the other end uh, is real. It, it is finally not realized because of higher order corrections which cancel it. In fact, the perturbative expansion by order uh, of a small coupling constant always ends up uh, converging in a quantum field theory based on the principles of gauge invariance. The demonstration of this fact uh, has been rewarded by a Nobel Prize uh, in 1999 for Toft and uh, Weltman. In fact, the cross-section uh, is obviously a finite quantity. The figure shows uh, the results, uh, the measurement by the L3 experimental lab. The cross-section follows with great precision in absolute magnitude and in energy dependence the prediction of quantum electrodynamics. In the next video, we give an example of an electromagnetic interaction between four fermions, E plus, E minus annihilation into a fermion-antifermion pair.